I'm free from living lies Free from my own deception Headed the right direction I walk through the fields of my big storm coming I thought I'd find a shelter in you A perfect sky Let's go camping What's going on guys? Back again in Algonquin Park for another trip. I'm paddling down Lake Opiongo to here, campsite number one for the night. But first, I came in through Access Point 11 on Highway 60 and this is Lake Opiongo, the biggest lake in Algonquin Park. After arriving at the park, I checked in with the Algonquin Outfitters and picked up my canoe that I reserved. <laughs> This is the building right behind there, and we're gonna say goodbye to them. And we're gonna continue on Lake Opiongo and see what we can explore. And then I started paddling down the east side of Lake Opiongo. Last time I was here, I took the water taxi across Lake Opiongo to the north arm to the Happy Isle Portage. This year, I gave myself seven days to explore all around Lake Opiongo. I felt like last time I missed everything in between by speeding through it on the water taxi so this time we have plenty of time to go and explore at a slow pace and see what we can find i believe you can paddle all the way across lake opiongo to the north end in one day but it depends on the conditions today we have excellent conditions out here it's nice and calm and the sun is shining it's a beautiful day but when we round this corner up here the wind really picks up and it could be kind of sketchy at some times so that's when the water taxi could come in handy it gives you an extra day to get deeper into the backcountry Now this is what I call self-isolation. I came across this little island that I had to stop and take a look at. And then I continued on a little bit further. It's time to look for a campsite. And I came to this little spot on the point here.
tried to talk myself in for a little bit of swim. Water was still pretty cold. Went in for a little bit, but I was out quick. She's freezing. Oh, it's cold. Nice fire pit over here. These birch trees didn't fare too well over the winter. Seems like this is the preferred tree to hang your food bag. There's already two ropes that are stuck up there, so hopefully I don't fall victim to that as well. There we go. Oh, yes, that was a good one. All ready to go for later. And then it was time to cook up some dinner. Today I had some uh, bacon and cheese quesadillas and a pepper and a little bit of hummus that was left over. And now it's time to just sit back and watch the sunset. Morning guys, day number two. 
Looks like it's gonna be another awesome day. Check out this view we got up here. Just gonna grab our food bag. Check out this bear hang, it turned out perfect. Oatmeal it is. One thing you should see is how clear this water is. This water is straight out of the lake with just purification tablets. Tastes just as good too. So right now we are in this campsite right here in the south arm and our next campsite is booked in the east arm. So we're gonna make our way to somewhere up here for today. All right, and a final sweep of the campsite. This one's all cleaned up and a little bit of firewood for our next tenants. The campsite served me well and it was off too. So long, campsite. Earlier through the day was perfect, nice and calm, nice and sunny. I was able to find a little quiet bay where I tucked myself in and had some lunch. So, where are we here now? So, so far, I started from my campsite here, paddled all around there, around there, and then cut across Jones Bay. And now we're hanging out just about here, just a little bit more to go to the East Narrows. Perfect day for paddling. Water is super calm. The sun is getting pretty warm. We'll keep going and make our way to the East Narrows. Cut across to Jones Bay and that led me to the East Narrows, which I paddled through there and I came up to one campsite, which I got out and looked around, but it wasn't very good. I figured I might as well keep on going and it's a good thing I did because I came across the next campsite, which was much better. This one where it has a nice overlooking view. Once I got here, did a nice little tour of the campsite. All right, let me show you what kind of site we I ended up with. Took a long paddle to the east arm, but I think it was worth it. So over here we have fire pit. I put my tent over here mainly because I didn't want to be underneath this death trap over here, this leaning tower. And also I wanted to stay away from here. Looks like that's some kind of animal trail might be coming down there later in the night. And also we got a few more trails over here, a nice view as well. And I'll show you what the trails look up like up here. And this is what we have up here. For dinner I use my Canadian made little stick stove, put it together. Started the fire.
kept on adding little sticks so it could boil some water for my dehydrated dinner. Once the water was boiling, I poured it onto my dehydrated penne pasta with artichokes and peppers and Parmesan cheese on top. And finally was able to sit down by the water and enjoy my dinner. And I'll see you tomorrow. eventful evening. I was woken up at 4 a.m. to some noise coming from this direction so I got up and I grabbed my bear spray and I was peeking out through the window the screen mesh of my tent and a big old moose comes walking straight through my campsite. You don't realize how small you are until that one is right in front of your tent. So after that I lie back down and try and go back to sleep and then an hour later I hear the same noise again and the same thing. I go to the screen window there, it's still too dark that I can't get any pictures. Another big old moose comes straight down the, through the campsite. Apparently this campsite along that ridge line, those things are like mountain goats. Those are his prints. It's a moose highway. So after the second moose, I got up and I Headed over to the canoe and I just sat in this little bay over here. Just sat there nice and quiet. And then eventually two more moose came walking straight out here. Standing on this ledge and walking along this little shoreline. The other two I was able to get some kind of footage of it. There's a little bit of video but the lighting quality, the lighting is not that good. So we'll see how well it turns out. But you can see down here, it's hard to tell, but those are all the moose tracks where they've been walking through.
so it's been a pretty eventful morning that's for sure so now I'm gonna head up and go get my food bag I'm gonna have some breakfast same thing as before oatmeal I usually eat oatmeal at home anyways it's not just a camping it's not just a camping meal and then after that we're gonna head over to we're gonna head back on the water and So right now we are in the east arm at this campsite right here on the tip and we're going to try and get somewhere to stay in the western narrows. We'll see how that goes. We'll be on the water shortly and and it looks like the conditions are favorable again. Not much wind but it is causing a problem with the mosquitoes. Lots of mosquitoes. I really got eaten alive sitting out in the canoe just waiting for whatever noise I heard rumbling in the woods. But eventually paid off, so hopefully everything will be okay. We'll see how it looks. All right, and we're off. I won't forget that campsite. Peeking through the tent window with a big, huge moose only five feet away. That was pretty awesome. Okay, so long campsite, and on to campsite number three. And now, on to the next one. While I was leaving, I could see the steepness of the hill that they were climbing. All up there is where the moose were walking by. I paddled down the east arm and took a few breaks along the way. Perfect time for relaxing in the calm water. The paddle gods were with me today as Opiongo was the calmest I've ever seen it. This is something you expect on the smaller lakes, but not Opiongo. I don't think uh, Opiongo is this calm very often. Looks like I'm lucking out. I paddled down Opiongo in good time and made it to the western narrows. And settled in on a nice island campsite. Took care of the normal camp chores and then tried to take uh, a swim in the freezing cold water. Then it was time to spend the afternoon sitting in my Helenix chair and relax. I spent some of the winter dehydrating some of my meals for the camping in the summertime. I had my dehydrated fajitas and berry crisp for dinner. Everything we prepared at home, we got our cheese, tortillas. Very crisp fajita seasoning, the fajita mix, and salsa. Got our water to our boil. Add a little water to the berry crisp, to the salsa. Add the fajita mix. Put the lid on and let it sit for 20 minutes. I just let mine sit on top of the twig stove which is burnt out. Very simple, just add water to rehydrate and let them sit for 20 minutes. That's it, 20 minutes is up. Add some seasoning, the fajita seasoning. Go. 
everything is all nice and rehydrated. Jeez. Some salsa. And there we go, backcountry fajitas. Next up, the very crisp. Just add the crisp topping. And that's it, very crisp in the back country. So I had plenty of time to explore the trails through the island. And settled in to watch the sunset. A little bit of a change from yesterday. Looks like I'm going to sit tight for a bit and see how this weather turns out. I was able to get out during a break in the rain and cook up my oatmeal with my little twig stove.
Most of the day was spent relaxing in the tent. Couldn't get out too much. A bunch of quick moving storms. They kept on coming in one after another. Storm would move in, then it would clear up and it would look nice again. But then right after half an hour later, another storm would come right in. Here comes the thunder. Not much going on today, pretty much stayed in place. Lots of rain today. Taking it easy, just relaxing in the tent. It was real windy before, but now it's calmed down. But the rain hasn't stopped. It's still raining. It's gotta end soon though, you would think. I have multiple days booked at this side of Opiongo, so there was no rush to move. So today I just stayed in place and just stayed at the same campsite. Didn't want to risk going in the water and getting caught in some of those storms. For dinner, I tested out my uh, homemade dehydrated lasagna. All right, time for dehydrated lasagna. First up, get your stick stove going to boil your water. Okay, the water's boiling. Now, all we have to do is put the lasagna together and add the hot water. More sauce. Another noodle and just keep on alternating. and let it rehydrate for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is up. Add some Parmesan cheese on top. There we go, backcountry lasagna. After raining all day, the sun is finally starting to show up. Now this is promising. Hopefully give things a chance to dry out. And hopefully that's the end of the rain. Might be able to get out for an evening paddle. It was much windier earlier. Now it seems to calm down. At least with these storms brushing through, there's a lot of high winds and it was able to keep all the mosquitoes and black flies out of the way. At least the one good thing there was no bugs at all but now with this uh, little bit of rain and it calming down I think the bugs are gonna make a presence again. I spoke too soon 30 minutes later. It doesn't look too good. Yeah, it's 
storming. It's storming. We've got a big storm coming. Good thing I got that canoe tied down. It's going to be a long night. choice but to wait it out. It's the safest option. Looks like another day in the tent. So the wind has been relentless for the last couple of days. Hasn't let up at all. Starting from last night. It's storming. It was blowing hard last night. That's the worst windstorm I've been in especially in a tent and there was thunder and lightning the sky was lighting up and I thought it was gonna blow my tent away my tent was really feeling the effects of that wind it held up okay so that was all right and luckily it is quite waterproof too no water came in so it was all right there as well I made sure to tie down the canoe just to make sure that it was there when I got up in the morning that was quite an experience that's for sure for the first little while, not much sleep was happening. It was a long night, but luckily I survived and started the early morning off at 4 a.m. waking up again. 4 a.m. Wind just kept on going. For lunch, I had uh, cheese crackers and some cured meat. my pre-made uh, dehydrated minestrone soup just to add the heat up the water add the water let it sit for 20 minutes and it was ready to go been a stark contrast 
from the day that I paddled up to this island where the water was perfectly calm, nice and flat, easy paddling. I could maneuver wherever I wanted. Compared to these last two days, this wind has been howling. Every 30 seconds, a big gust will come through, then I'll be calm, then a big gust will come through again non-stop all day. There's no way I'd be able to get to where I wanted to go. It seems like the best bet for me is to stick around here for one more night. I was spending my time taking a few pictures of the two resident squirrels on the island. I guess they came over in the winter time and they have the island all to themselves. Feasting on all the pine cones from the red pines and white pines. They still give me the chirp every once in a while to let me know that I'm not welcome here, that this is their island. Early in the afternoon, I was able to catch a glimpse of two military planes fly by. I had to jump up right away. I've been able to pass the time by fishing off the side of the island. inches that was a good one <laughs> maybe being on this island isn't so bad fingers crossed I'll be able to get on the move again tomorrow and be able to scout at another nice campsite where I can spend the night
All right, we can finally get back in the canoe and do some paddling. Conditions are much more favorable today, as you can see. The thing about this one campsite is that it seems to be at the end of a wind tunnel. Every minute or so, the wind builds up and just flows right through the campsite continuously. It doesn't stop. But anyways, this campsite served, us, served me well, and now, as you can see, we'll finally be able to get back on the water and start canoeing again. So today we're going to paddle across this area over here and heading back to the south arm. So we'll be taking, I'm staying at this campsite right here and I'm going to try and either paddle across Grand Bay or if it's too bad I'm going to paddle all the way around and the next campsite is scheduled to stay in the south arm again. So we'll find a spot down there and we'll see how it goes. So that'll be it for now. I'm going to pack up and then we'll get back on the water after a three day absence from being stranded at this island campsite. It is a good campsite but I'm itching to get going again after three days. So. I'll see you on the water. All right, three days spent here, and now off to campsite number four. Had some luck and I was able to uh, hook into a, a lake trout. Fish on! Eventually I was able to land them and keep them for lunch. I just gotta get out of these swells. We got a little lake trout. When I was paddling through the white cap, the wind picked up and I just used my paddle as a rudder. I paddled past one gull island which had a bunch of nests. That's what we went through. A few white caps out there. They didn't seem to mind. When I got to my campsite, I filleted the fish up.
I fried up one fish with the fish crisp batter. It tastes pretty good. The second fillet, I put it in tin foil and set it close to the ashes and let it cook that way with just a little bit of butter and some seasoning on. I also experimented with uh, some ash bread. It's a traditional style of cooking bread where you just put it right on the ashes. Flour, baking powder, butter, a little bit of water, and salt. Ash bread still needs some work, but uh, it tastes okay. A few burnt parts, a little more practice, maybe. It was just a few simple camp chores, cleaning up, cleaning up the dishes. And then I was able to get out on a short paddle across, not far from the campsite, over to uh, Marmot Lake Portage. First portage of the year. I think it was unmaintained trail. But everything's unmaintained because the beginning of the season. Plus, I don't have to carry my pack because that's at the campsite. I'm just on an exploration, exploration trip. Oh, up ahead looks like we got a portage hurdle. Fall down in the way.
we go, just taking a seat, taking a breather. Nice little seat in the middle of Portage. No problem. Uh, when I got to the lake, I tried a little bit of fishing, said there's some brookies in there, and unfortunately I wasn't able to catch any, so I just uh, paddled around there. It's a very small lake with uh, three beaver dams I counted in there, so the beavers are working hard, that's for sure. And then I came back. Marmot Lake didn't have, wasn't very big, lots of white pine. Very quiet, very calm compared to Opiongo that I've been on. We're heading back for dinner for day six. And then tomorrow we're heading out, out of the park. The seventh day, the last day. All right, time for some chili. First step, boil some water. Once your water's boiling, take just some of it out. You only need enough water just to cover the chili. Add your chili. And then add just uh, enough water to cover the chili. And that's it. Just let it sit for 20 minutes to rehydrate. Everything's already cooked. I just keep it by the fire to stay warm. 20 minutes and it'll be rehydrated. 20 minutes later, everything is rehydrated. But yeah, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I was quite happy with that. And for dessert, I had created a dehydrated apple crisp with some cranberries inside as well. Just add water to that, let it sit for 20 minutes or so, and then it's ready to go. Nice little treat to have in the backcountry. Keeps it light, simple, easy. I'll spend the rest of the night just uh, sitting by the fire and relaxing. And tomorrow's the last day. Uh, I'll be heading home. It was a cold one last night. So today I'll be heading straight down there south on my way home. So right now I am at Squaw Bay, this campsite right here. And I'll be traveling down the south arm back to Axis Point 11, Algonquin Outfitters. That's it, the last day. The 
Looks like it's going to be a good day for paddling. Day seven. Six nights, seven days in Algonquin Park. Come over here and pick up the last bear hang of the trip. One more round of morning oats, and then we'll be back to civilization. And we're off on our way to Opiongo Access Lake, Access Point. That campsite treated us well. Nice campsite. Now it's our last day and looks like it's going to be a great paddle on the way back. Look familiar? Day one campsite. Some new tenants. Enjoying the site. They set up the tent exactly where I did too. Island, the island up ahead, the one I got out and explored. And we're getting close now, around this corner should be it. the end of my seven day Algonquin trip just off Yongo Lake. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Till next time, this is Jay's Way. Take care.
There's the park float plane. There's the park float plane. Let's go, Captain. A little bit of smoke. We're gonna paddle out there, across there, and keep on going south. Not in the air, of course. What do you guys think? That was a good one! <laughs>